arriving on site, the first step after unpacking the IPA test equipment is to perform the verification operations. The initial verification measurement will be used, we'll use the PIM source. In this particular case, we're going to consider using the optional RTF module. We'll go into the mode selection, ensuring that the RTF module is indeed activated, it's been connected correctly, and select that mode. As we move to the mode for RTF, we will push the cow. Instructions tell us to attach the PIM source to the output port of the RTF module. We do so and press OK. The calibration process will begin. This calibration will be good for 12 hours or should be redone anytime that you remove yourself from a site or remove the RTF module and reinstall it. Once the CAL has run, a good check is to turn the RF on and perform an RTF measurement. Initially, a return loss measurement will allow the calculation of distance to fault, followed by a distance to PIM measurement. What we would expect to see after a calibration is the peak PIM and the peak return loss should both be at zero feet. To graphically view the RTF performance, press the scroll bar on the right side of the screen. Once this is complete, we'll now change modes to the fixed tone mode. In the fixed tone mode, we'll turn the RF on and we'll identify the level that the PIM source provides and make sure that it's appropriate. In this particular case, the 108 dBC measurement is what we would expect from this particular PIM source. At any time along the way, we can record the data and turn the RF off. We do not need to run for the entire 90 seconds. It's adequate to perform a shorter measurement when using the PIM source. At this point, the PIM source has been added to the verification process and when we look into the report, we'll see that it has been added